forget. <laughs> Hello. Hello, and welcome to the Invert Podcast. Um, my name's Nat, I'm from Somerset Spiders, and I'm joined today with Tarantula Leah. Yes. Um, yes. Welcome, and I believe we are hopefully going to have Thomas from Ants on a Rock. Um, he is supposed to be joining us, but he's a very busy man. Right. <laughs> he <laughs> so, spit us into his, his busy schedule. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's good, good. Yeah, I'm excited, though. And, you know, like like I was saying before, I, I don't know much about ants. Mm. Um, I'm, you know, I'm more like I know a lot about arachnids and tarantulas. Obviously, behind me, I have um, most of my collection. Um, but yeah, I don't know much about ants. I know, like, when I was a kid, we you could get like an ant farm. Um, and it came in like this little kit and then you just kind of put the dirt in and all the ants and whatnot. And then you just watch them do their thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I I, 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 like, and the ant kits I see now, uh, yeah. they have like this gel crystal stuff and oh wow, uh, the, the ones you can buy off, off of Wish. And I expect when Thomas joins us, he'll tell us about how you shouldn't be using them. Yeah, um, I hope so. They're, they're really bad, but I'm, I've been infatuated. I don't know if you've come across um ants canada i you know i i have i've watched a few of those episodes um and they are really fascinating absolutely absolutely yes. i like I, i'm i'm at this point of thinking i would really like to keep some ants and <laughs> Me we're, too. Seeing, we're actually <laughs> seeing them more a lot more leah uh in inver invert shows yes so people are uh it's not just spiders and and, and other inverts there's a lot of ants now right um, well, and and beetles and um, you know mantises and stuff like those are making a pretty big uh, splash in the invert world. I mean, I have five colonies of isopods, so that's kind of cool too. I love them. They're Ice they're cute. Isopods. They are. Yes. <laughs> they are yeah. really cute. They're hey, so cute. shady. Thank you for joining us. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. So. Um, we we were briefly talking off screen about yes. uh, money, weren't we? About how much we spend yes. on, on <laughs> our creatures. And I suppose, whilst we've got you, Leah, a really good topic mm. would be to think about how much spiders cost in the USA. Right, because it's it's a little different between the US and the UK. Um, but yeah, spiders. Uh, I mean, for the more common tarantulas, you're you're probably going to pay about. Uh, 50, 40 to, to $60 for the more common ones. And then, mm -hmm. you know, as as their rarity progresses, so does their expensivity, if you will. That's I made that up. Um, but yeah, they get a little more expensive um, the more rare the tarantula is. Like right now, I believe the uh, Typhoclana celadonia is really common in the UK. From okay. what I hear, it's pretty common, so you guys don't pay a whole lot of money for them. But here, they're not quite as common, and they're super, super sought after. So they cost about two to three hundred. I know, um, about a year and a half ago, they were close to six hundred for one spiderling. Yeah, so. so they were very expensive over here in the UK. Yeah. Um, just trying to stop my face from being all washed out. Uh, they were very expensive here in the UK, and uh -huh. they are still really sought after. The T cell yeah. is. They we have a one of our um, companies that we order from in the UK called the Spider Shop. They put a post yeah. up the other day. Uh -huh. uh, they had some in stock, and as soon as people went to go and click on it, they'd sold out already. Right so within they, days. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. Uh, Shady's in the chat, and uh, she's just been to Ham, uh, which is one of the biggest tarantula and invert shows in Germany. Right. And uh, it looks like there was slings there for 60 to 80 euros. Okay, so that's years. that's close to like 80 or 90 in US, I believe. Roughly. Oh, no, we're not no. talking euros, my bad, or pounds. Yeah. Yeah. My oh, mistake. no, uh, so Shady is euros. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, it would be, I don't know what, like $150, something like that. Right. If oh, wow. If you, if you were to transfer euros over, I can't remember what the exchange rate is. I've probably got that wrong. 
right? No, I think you're absolutely but right. But I, I, I think the biggest battle for um, yourselves in the States is that the spiders are generally breeded in Europe, bred in Europe. Yes. So Some of then they have to be then shipped over to the States. That's where that money is. Right going right and then your import tax and right 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 well especially with the the more rare species you know uh, i know quite a few like local breeders um it's just that the demand right now in the states is is way more than what our local breeders can actually keep up with and so that's why we have been kind of relying on the european uh market to import those species and kind of hopefully like fulfill that that demand yeah it's yeah, tricky I, 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 it, it is tricky and when you think about the the other side of the hobby for you guys over there when you start thinking about transferring spider from state to state mm -hmm. and all of the things that go there so it, if you yeah. breed a specific species let's think about the pokeless area right so, um you, right. You, you you could breed some in one state you could breed mm -hmm. some Metallicas, however, you can only sell them to people in the state. So if they if they have the right. all, you, it might stop you from wanting to breed them because if you can only uh, in some states if you can only sell them in your state, you might end up with two three hundred tarantulas, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> tarantulas right, like a whole bunch like of babies. in your house, just sort of oh, I've just got yeah. loads of them. So yeah, right. Um, yeah, that's that's the that's definitely part of the problem. Um, I mean, I understand the restrictions behind that because Postalotheria right now they are critically endangered. They're really uh, losing their natural habitats, so that's kind of why they put those protections. Um, but I agree with you. I think it really kind of hurts the local breeders more than um, anything, unless unless you're traveling like with a show like a reptile show or an exotic show. Um, I believe that there's a little bit of like loopholes and leeway through that because I have bought uh postletheria species from expos. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know how they get through that, but I know that there are quite a few species that are definitely on that restricted, like have to be within state to 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 sell them or buy them or whatever. Absolutely, so. it, it, it's. It's just a lot, isn't it? It's yeah. a lot to sort of get your head around and, and restrictions and everything right. like that. So I'm going to have a look at... So Wesley couldn't join us today because he was poorly. And right. Weather. So I'm going to have a quick little look at the questions he sent us. Um, oh, we've got Sharon in the chat. Hello, Sharon. Yes. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, uh, oh. So let's have a little look at some of these questions he's he's uh, sent us, which are more generic to us. Good. Um, okay. Cool. So, Leah, what what do you think is your experience of um, the most offensive tarantula that that you've come across? Uh, it, it, I would it, maybe in your collection or um, currently in my collection, I would say my most offensive tarantula would probably be my nandus, like my. Um, like the Nandu, yeah, the Nandu colorata velosis, very defensive tarantula, kicks hairs all the time. Like, I move a little bit, she'll kick hairs. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but as far as, like, overall in the hobby, um, I do believe the Seriopagus munex uh, is is definitely the, the most defensive. Um, they, you know... It's funny because if you give them what they need, so like a Seriopagus minax, they're a fossorial species. So they prefer to, to burrow underground and that's pretty much where they'll stay. Yeah. Um, so if you give them plenty of dirt and space to, to burrow and whatnot, you'll never see it, but you'll also won't get that defensive behavior um, because yeah. it won't feel the need to, to, it won't feel threatened. It won't feel, you know, backed into a corner, if you will. Um, so I've, you know, I had a Seriopicus Minex. She was a eight-year-old girl, and that's actually pretty old for a captive bred. Well, okay. maybe not. No, she was, she was pretty old. <laughs> yeah. Like my, 
I got her from a friend and he had her for, you know, seven or eight years. And so when I got her, she was, she was an old lady, but she was still spicy. Like I rehoused her. And the moment that I, I got her out of her burrow, she was just, you know, threat pose and, and slap in the ground. She was very, very defensive. So. Yeah. I, 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 th I think you're really right about the, so if you have a fossorial species, so lot what lots of people do for some reason and <laughs> i i think it's what they've maybe seen or uh in videos and and, uh -huh. and and other people's setups but there's also this conversation around oh you want to see your spider so what they do right. is they provide less substrate they they provide less of what that spider wants now you don't need to put three foot of substrate in no but you need to get me the, the spider needs to feel secure and right. um Tom Moran talks about this quite a lot around the idea yes. of um, giving it what it needs so it thrives. Mm -hmm. And uh, sorry, I was just reading Shady's comment. So yeah, giving giving <laughs> giving um, what it needs so it thrives and so it can feel secure. Absolutely, is, is, is really important. We we really want to see our spiders. Oh but, yeah, but having a pet hole is kind of okay. I think it's pretty cool and okay because um, I have a few fossorials. I currently have a, um, I believe it's called a Kilobrachi species Kang Krishan or yeah. the Smoky Earth Tiger. Um, beautiful tarantula, absolutely gorgeous, but I never really see her. Um, but I am fascinated with her only because, you know, her burrow and the turret that she has made like around her burrow is is really really something um yeah. and the the way that they web around the 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 tunnels that they dig is is really really fascinating it really it's, kind of holds everything together it's like a volcano kind of yeah. thing isn't it where it come comes out yeah yeah definitely um she's over here let me let me pull her out real quick she's not in a huge enclosure that's the funny thing is i have here in the States, we have um, like herp cult and, um, you know, tarantula cribs. I think they're trying, they're working on getting over into the UK. I'm not sure if they are yet, yeah. um, but these, you know, good enclosures. But as you can see, this one, it's about like, I'd say this about, I think this is 10 inches, maybe 12 inches, but she is really happy in here. Like, yeah. I know there's a lot of reflection, but you can see that like this right here is her turret and her burrow. Um, and every now and then I'll, I'll throw a flashlight right here and you can, you can kind of see her body in there. So yeah. she has, she has burrowed pretty deeply. Um, but she's happy. She doesn't throw threat poses. She's not, I never see her unless I'm out at like 2 AM and I, you know, catch a glimpse of her just hanging out. But for the most part, this is what I see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, um, oh, Shady's actually put a. Uh, comment in there so oh. I'm, just, I'm I'm getting used to StreamYard so yeah I'm not, I'm not as good as Wesley so, um, <laughs> so she actually keeps her room pretty dark so hers doesn't yeah. dig at all and is always on top right well I mean yeah it, the... it, it's about whether you can isn't it? It, it whether you can keep it huh I mean if it's oh we have lost Leah but hopefully she will come back. So yeah, so uh, as as we were talking and... Oh, just let me add you to... There we are. So sorry about that. I, uh, uh, I pushed, okay. the wrong, pushed the wrong button. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, you were saying that she keeps <laughs> her room very dark. <laughs> you were... Yeah, so she keeps keeps her room very dark but she's also go, gone on to say that the downside is when you open the lid she always feels threatened um so oh, yeah and, and, and that is that's the kind of that's the kind of thing isn't it where yes. you can have you can't have the best of both worlds but i i think what i've done as well is i've definitely noticed that i've adapted my own sleeping pattern so oh. uh I, like maybe like I, I i tend to go to bed later now just because i've got so many spiders and sure. i i spend some time just sort of like looking at them and, and doing it and noticing when they come out mm -hmm. ar around nine ten o'clock it's sort of to observe them 
and, and yes. where, what they're doing is actually a really nice nice part of yeah. the hobby. Oh, definitely. I agree. If you you know, if you're staying up kind of late, um that's that's party time for the tarantulas. Honestly, like it's really cool to come out in those late evening hours um to observe their behaviors because most of the time you're going to see them doing some web making, um, you know, pushing dirt around. Uh, I know, especially with the fossorials, that's how they make those turrets is they just, they dig all that dirt up and then they like throw it out of the burrow. So um, I well, do, yeah. I mean, oh, go right ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, I, I fully agree. I've, I've just yeah. rehoused, um, I've just rehoused two curly hairs. So, oh, cool! Um, yeah. Yesterday, and I made a lovely setup for them. Nice. And yeah, they're just bulldozing it now. Yeah, right. So, I mean, that's uh, digging, <laughs> digging it up. And and one of the reasons why I've upgraded them is they were in. I don't know whether I'll just see if I can grab one. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I know so, I've I've got a couple curlies that I need to rehouse yeah. as well. <laughs> We have these pots for some slings in. The oh UK. yeah! I don't know if you've come across them. I think they're. Are they oh, new yeah. in the states or? No, we those? love those. Yeah. I keep like smaller. If I get slings and stuff, those are really great for yeah. for. Slings. So, but reading, reading up on it, um, mm -hmm. and doing further research, which I think is always really important, is mm -hmm. understanding that uh, the Tilicotal albulosum. That's, yeah. That's great. Yep. They yes. like to. They do actually like to borrow. They're not they an do. obligated borrower, borrower, but if you give them that opportunity, they will. They will. So yep. I'm going to disappear again for a second. No worries. I've I've got my curly right here. Um, and she. This is one of my girls that definitely needs a rehouse. So the one <laughs> thing I'm really up, really worried about. Oh, look at that. The yeah. One thing that I, that I dislike about the UK is we can't get those Amex boxes. Oh no. Because the Amex, the yeah, the Amex boxes are really great. The Amex yeah. um I but do like them. I use them a lot. We have I, I did manage to get some on Amazon. So Oh good. <laughs> there's uh nice. That it's not an Amex box, but it's the same sort of concept. But just by giving it that I've got too many lights, giving it that three inch it like two and a half, three inches of right. substrate, the ability for it to borrow. Um, it was really yeah. interesting this morning to wake up and see that they had redecorated. They'd moved the moss around, <laughs> they yeah. everything, and filled up the water. Yeah. As, right. As they, as they <laughs> I love that. I, I always love that. That's It's funny to watch them do that, because you think that you're setting up a really great enclosure. You've got all these good anchor points, cute little flowers, and then three days later, you're looking at your, you know, Grandma Stola Polka or whoever, and there's just flowers just torn apart and covered in dirt. And you're like, what did you do? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I spent lots of time making it look pretty. Right. And, you know, <laughs> right. but, but that's part yeah. of that's part of it. I, yeah. It's nice to, nice to set it all up. Um, the, the, I've, I've definitely learned a lot from watching Petco at the Dark Den and, Love and Petco. Other, yeah. other people, and they're just sort uh -huh. of what I really like about their stuff is they'll show it right. three weeks afterwards and go, look at all this soil it's kicked out. Or yeah, yeah. You know, it, just, it just sort of gives you that idea. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to put a quick message into the podcast group to see. Uh, no problem. Any, anything else? How many curly hairs do you have? Um, I have three little cuddle elbow pilos. Yeah, so I have three uh, curly hairs. Um, and they're all mostly like juvenile. Uh, they're coming up on sub adult size. Um, so I don't have any slings of them, but they're, they're wonderful. I have here in the States. I don't know why, um, but they cut, there's one, the Honduras one, and then there's the Nicaraguan. And yeah. I believe they consider the Honduras, the hobby form. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure like where all that those terminologies come from because i know that honduras and and nicaragua are pretty pretty close i would say well i might have to look at a map but i'm pretty sure like geographically they're pretty pretty similar regions um so it's kind of interesting like 
Because mm -hmm. when I'm when i looking at them, I, I don't really see a whole lot of difference between the two species. Um, and I believe they're all kind of categorized in the same species. So it's really strange. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think there was, um, I believe there was a, a, a discussion around where they may be um, bred with another tarantula, the Honduras ones, uh, that, that weren't true form. Which, okay. Which weren't. So they're very, very, very similar. They're the same genus, um, yeah. but but not the same species. And I think that's where they think that it's come from. Whereas right. the Nicaraguan is supposed to be the pure curly hair. The pure bloodline. Okay. And, and, and that is, I, I think that is one of the really big things about within the, the hobby that, that mm. lots of people don't know is that unlike snake breeders who are mm. trying to get different forms and different morphs, you're trying to keep it oh, yeah. in, in the same thing. So if you could breed breed the Nicaraguan type, yeah, you know, that that that's favored in the hobby. But that you know that I think I was reading an article, I can't remember who it was by, but I'll stick something in the comments later. Sure. Uh, um, they are trying to stop the Honduras genus from. Oh wow! You know, the the people in the hobby would like to to stop it, like the hardcore. Sure. Oh, I can see that. I mean, owners, which makes yeah the, total sense. I agree, though. The hybridization of certain species and stuff is is really a negative thing in the hobby. Um, it's definitely very looked down on. It's very frowned on. Uh, I know. Um, I believe there was a couple of Brocky Pelma species that that unfortunately had that happen. I believe it's Fama Garteni. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, or the Amelia. Mm -hmm. I, I think that they there was you know the Brocky Pelma Hamori and um, the Bomb Garteni or Bomb Garteni. Yeah, those two. Somebody somewhere hybridized them, and that's how we got the Brachypelma Emilia. Um, and it's just, it's just, it, it, as far as like conservation um, and, you know, keeping the species bloodlines, you know, clean, if you will, um, then that actually is a benefit to the hobby because then it helps to keep those species alive and around and in their purest form. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think in the wild, if there's hybridization happening, that, then that that's, happens. You know, right. that's, uh, that's just I, natural. That's. <laughs> I think if know. we're if we're making it happen, that's the. That's the problem. That's the problem, isn't it? Right. So, um, what? Seeing as it's a, a Somerset Spiders and the Tarantula Leah show, by the looks of it. Today, yeah. Um, what what got you into the hobby, Leah? Oh, uh, you know, I actually was terrified of arachnids and spiders before. Um, I used to be like, pet I mean, so petrified. I would scream and run and, and, you know, just be super scared of them. And I, uh, there's a beautiful, wonderful place here in Colorado called the Butterfly Pavilion. Yeah. And at this wonderful place, they have a Gramostola um uh rosea and porteries that they actually use as animal ambassadors and so you can go and they say hold rosie so you go and you can hold rosie um and i mean when i first went it was just she, they allowed her to just kind of do, do, do and that's kind of what started it it was fascinating for me because it was wild that you can barely feel their feet but you can feel their weight and it's almost yeah. like what is that you know um and so that's kind of where the fascination started and then from there i was at a curiosities and oddities expo um where this one wonderful lady had a pink toe tarantula and she had bonded with this tarantula so well that it just it trusted her completely like it would just crawl on her and she just allowed it um, and I just was like, wait a minute, they're, they actually are like animals. They have um, thoughts and feelings like cats and dogs do. Um, and I, I, this is also kind of a, a topic of contention in the hobby. I think it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so a lot of people don't really believe that tarantulas can can or have that kind of emotions or whatnot. And I, I think to an extent that that's true. Um, but I do think that they have a consciousness and I do think that they do have emotions, maybe not quite as expansive as a, as a human or a dog, um, but they, they're there. Well, I, 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 if we think about it in, in a sense of the, those basic emotions, when a tarantula does a threat pose, it's, mm. it's scared, isn't it? So being, right. being scared is an emotion. So absolutely, we're, we're thinking about that. So, what was your first tarantula then? After uh, a Vicularia Vicularia, I had a, a pink toe tarantula uh, named her Django Fett. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, <laughs> right? Yeah. I have, um, yeah. Most of my tarantulas are named after Star Wars characters, um, just because I'm kind of a Star Wars nut. But uh, yeah, so I started with the the you know pink toe tarantula, Costa Rican pink toe. Um, and I, I loved her. And then it just kind of grew from there. I think after that, I got the GBB. Um, yeah. And then I moved to, you know, the Caribbean of Versicolor. I so, lost. So th there's, a, there's a bit of a hint here about, like, the bright colors, maybe? A very yeah, attractive. I've... You found that quite attractive at the beginning? Yes, I did. I did. Because I, I actually had no idea that tarantulas were so colorful until mm -hmm. like I got the AVIC AVIC and then I started doing much more research into you know different species and and you know where they come from and all those things and I started to discover that there are so many blue tarantulas that it, it's hard to ignore those beautiful colors um so yeah that's definitely and I think that's something that a lot of like new tarantula keepers these days are really into that because of the colors yeah. those beautiful vibrancy i i th i think that the colors they really help yeah um break down the stigma because people think people think big black scary tarantula or brown right. you you know you think about the um sturmy the tea sturmy or yeah uh, something something along those lines and like a, a it, fauna pelma calcones or you know <laughs> the arizona yeah. blondes yeah. Yeah. It, exactly. And mm -hmm. I'm. I, I. I'll just. I am with Shady. I. I also like the brown ones. I. I think, Me too. I, I think they're beautiful in their own little way. But they when are. when I have people ask me why why do you keep these animals, and it's like, well, actually, they're like, oh, I would really hate to have them in my home and and things like that. And then you show them the yeah. pictures of the really nice vibrant ones they're like what right. they actually come like this and then you you maybe drop in a tea saladonia picture right and you know they're like wow amazing um, right i i think that's one of my favorite like bragging points for a uh, for you know people who aren't tarantula keepers who ask me like why do you keep these tarantulas what's the point of it um for me you know it's a couple of different things it's it's conservation it's education um, but also for me, like mental health, you know, uh, these guys, they keep me grounded. So I have a tendency to kind of drift off and, um, you know, when I'm taking care and, and feeding my tarantulas or rehousing a tarantula, uh, it really, really helps to keep me in the moment because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not in the moment and you're not paying attention to those, you know, the body language that, that the tarantulas are gonna, they're gonna show you. Um, then, you know, you're going to get bit or, or worse, um, well, you know, or, or your tarantula is going to die. So being in the moment and being grounded is, is really, uh, a big part of it for me, just, yeah. you know, mental health wise. Um, but yeah, the, the colors, like that's for, for sure the, my favorite bragging point, because I, I have a Zenesis intermedia, Ooh, uh, nice. or you know, the Colombian, I believe it's called Colombian Lesser Back. Yeah. Uh, or no, uh, Amazonian Blue Bloom, I believe is what it's called. Big, beautiful spider. Um, but that pink starburst on the carapace is is really eye-catching. And so, you know, anytime I show anybody that species, they're kind of like, what? That's amazing. You know, it's like, yeah. 
There's yeah. a whole world you're not even aware of. So yeah, it, it's. I, I I think for me, people think I'm just sat in my in my little dark room with just one little <laughs> tarantula or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, but I I I I agree with almost everything you're saying. Really, thank for you. For me, for me, I I think having having them to look after is is really nice i like to call myself a caretaker opposed to yes. you know I'm, I'm just taking care of them that's that's what right. i'm doing and today for instance i'm sort of i'm having a bit of an issue with a balfouri that's decided to uh -oh. start to start it to like curl under the whereas, uh -oh. whereas it's others are it's it's others been the communal or okay i spotted it last night and like Something's not quite right. It's not moving right. And uh -oh. today, but it was a focus. You know, today's been a really good focus. Yes. So I've upgraded their enclosure very quickly yeah. in a, into a temporary one, given it more ventilation, right. all of those sorts of things. And just through that process, it was really nice. Even when I was chasing one that was crawling under the table because it got <laughs> out. Uh, and they're only they're only slings. They're they're small juveniles, <laughs> but. Even cool. though it's a bit of a sad thing that's going on, sure, it's still a really good focus. And also, I've definitely noticed that my mental health has improved, right? Uh, from yeah. from keeping them, um, I'm a, I'm actually a mental health worker, so I support oh, wow. people with their mental health, and I'm training to become a mental health nurse. But that doesn't mean that we don't have our own mental health, right? Um, and yeah, the 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 focus is there, and I I, I think if anything, the focus has been a bit too much on the spiders and I'm sort of not doing other things, but now it's sort yeah. of getting back into it and, and, and doing it. Sure. And, but, you know, like you say, being in the moment, being able to focus on something is, yes. is really good. The, the reason why I got into the hobby, uh -huh. a bit of an odd, odd reason. So I, I ended up getting a hogno snake. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, that was really nice. And uh, Betty, she's lovely. Yes, um, and so I've had her for about a year, and but after about a month of having her, I was like, I really like this, and I remember you. It sort of brought back memories as a child, where I was like, Oh, I'd really like to have a zoo and all right. of these kinds of things. And I was just scrolling <laughs> through. I I was watching Snake Discovery. Oh, I That's love Snake Discovery. Yeah, I was watching Snake Discovery, and it did like this automatic play thing, and Petco came up. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And, that. and then the next video was the Tarantula Collective. I'm like, oh, okay. And then they yep. were talking about ordering them. And I think it might have been 2 a.m. in the morning, something silly uh, like sure. that. Sure. And I was like, what? You can order tarantulas. And I thought, well, why not? And I ordered one and it arrived. And I was terrified for um, <laughs> a, a week, two weeks. But I was more terrified that I was going to kill it. I right. think it's like that, that real real concern right so, but, but then like that development and sort of seeing and then witnessing the first molt of right. um of the tarantula i actually got to witness it happening uh luckily tarantula collective petco everyone has been like if they're on the back don't worry about it it's right so don't worry already prepared for that and, absolutely <laughs> and then just to see see that miracle i was like i was hooked it's it's incredible. It really is. And and it sounds like your progression was a lot like mine. I believe um, mine was a little different. I went, you know, yeah. Tarantula Collective and then Petco in the Dark Den um, and Tom Moran. I, I'm i a big fan I, of Tom. Tom, he, he's got a special place. He really, you know, he is the husbandry god. I will tell yeah. you that because I do use his uh, methods the reason I do is because he's not very far from me. He's over in, I believe, Missouri. Yeah. Um, but Colorado here, I mean, we're at a pretty high altitude. So humidity and moisture um, here is is almost non-existent. Um, but we, I mean, we have fluctuations, obviously, like most places do. But because of the altitude, the air is quite a bit thinner. Um, so the humidity just doesn't stick around quite as well as like, you know, sea level um, so Tom Moran, I, you know, I, I actually lost a couple of spiders because of the humidity issues. Um, and so I really got into Tom Moran and 
I started using his methods as, you know, he says just to, to wet down a corner real good and then kind of let it dry. Um, I'm a little tiny bit different just because Colorado. So um, most of the time my, my, the moisture will dry up here within four to five days. Okay. So okay. I'm moisturized pretty much every week. Just, just, you know, at, when I'm feeding, I put in moisture. Um, I'll wet down a corner or so. And sometimes I'll put a little extra just because it is so darn dry here. Um, you know, people who move to Colorado, it's kind of funny. They, they, a lot of people have bloody noses because of the altitude, because of the dryness. Um, and they, you know, they get kind of confused. They're like, why, why am I having this? And it's, you know, it's, this is the climate. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> it is, it, it, and, and, and it does have a, a real big effect. So for, yeah. for me, I I was keeping on cocoa soil, uh, cocoa okay, fiber. Yeah. So and I'm I'm trying to quit uh, cocoa yeah. fiber um, because I don't find it holds the moisture enough. But whereas uh. when we we have the I, I I'm not sure whether you have it over there, but we've got Spider Life, which is a bit of a substrate mix. Um, oh yeah, okay. Uh, a mix up, which is really nice. And it and in the UK, I'm in the Southwest as well. Um, it's, okay. it's quite it's quite moist. Uh, there's, right. Uh, my, my humidity. Uh, in my flat, it'll be different for other people, but at the moment, sure. my humidity sits at around forty to fifty percent, and um, that's wonderful. It's it's just um, we don't have to do. I don't. I don't have to do as much. Uh, right. You, you don't. Down, you probably but... don't have. Yeah, that that yeah. maintenance. You're not having to do quite as quite as often um, for. But but it's know. definitely keeping on top of it, though. I, you know. It, yes. It's, sort of yes. making sure there's a water bowl making sure that's filled um right you know i do follow what tom Rand says about watering down one corner and giving it the opportunity and things mm -hmm. so and and i i have to say i love watching him on um not oh, watching, him. watching him i love watching him but also i'm i'm getting the bus at the moment commuting yeah and, uh so i just listen to his podcasts yeah, he's he has a wonderful podcast. Um, he's actually, I mean, he's a genius. I don't know how he comes up with topics every week, but he is fantastic. Yeah. Highly recommend his podcast. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we use. I use. Uh, I believe. I believe I use Exoterra Reptis oil. Yeah, it's near enough um, the same thing. Isn't yeah. It? I, I use the jungle mix. I find that that one's really nice because it's got little bits of charcoal, little bits of sphagnum moss, um, and and then of course the dirt and whatnot. And it it comes kind of moisture, but I I find that with like my nandu chromatis, the colorado villosis, and the trepepe, they seem to not really like moisture quite as much. No. So no. I I right. I mean I think they come from a pretty uh pretty like scrubland kind of terrain in brazil um i know that the trepepe comes from like right on the border of brazil and argentina so i know that that's a very kind of deserty yeah scrubland. it's kind of like savannah scrubland isn't it so yes. yes yes so i wonder for you um do you keep a fauna pelmas at all like the the fauna pelma calcodes euphalatum uh, no i haven't got uh oh no yes uh, yeah, I was cool. thinking about a totally different genus of spider. Um, oh. Yeah, I've got um, I've got one Calcodes. Oh, nice. So um, I keep it relatively dry, um, though yeah. it I, I water down a corner. It's oh, sure. it's current. It's currently at the moment. It's decided to borrow. Um, <laughs> so, which says yeah. to me it's looking for moisture. So uh, and but lovely, it's. It dig dug its burrow at the back and then brought uh -huh. it to the front, so I can always see it, which is which is really nice. And right. I have got two uh, Simani. I found oh yeah, Simani. I don't know if you've got those. The I have one Co Costa Rican zebra or the the yeah the zebra yeah the Costa Rican zebra stripe. Um, yeah. yeah, I have one, and mine is um, a juvenile about the size of you know a U.S. nickel. Yeah. Um, so Those slow growers yeah very slow grow <laughs> i've had her for at least a year now um and she has grown very little so yeah afana pilmas brachypilmas gramostolas they're definitely known for being those slow growers um 
but yeah, I've found that Maya Fauna Pilmas are, are pretty content with, with how things are. Uh, yeah. If I don't add a whole lot of moisture and stuff, they seem to really appreciate that. Um, the Nandus, it's funny because I, I always find my Nandus like on the wall of their enclosure, just kind of, I'm like, oh, too much moisture. Okay. Yeah. That, you that, know. That, that, that's a really, uh, that's actually a really good tip, isn't it? What to look out yeah. for if you're, yes. if your spider is getting away from the soil, it's too wet. It's probably too uh, moist. Probably yeah. too moist. Uh, you know, there are provisos in there. So like if you've just rehoused something, it's going to. It's going to do that. Yeah. yeah, just because, yeah. you know, they, they got to get adjusted to their new home and whatnot. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love my tarantulas. I just love yeah. them. I, I, just, I really love a fauna pelmas. I'm, I'm a nut for them. Uh, I believe my my logo is actually an a fauna pelma calcodes. Um, quick little look. Yeah, <laughs> I think, no, I, by I, all I, means. I actually think it is, isn't it? It is. Uh, it's an a fauna pelma calcodes. Um, so, you know, little Arizona blonde. <laughs> but they are some of my favorite tarantulas um, just because the, the the browns. The browns are oh. so diverse and unique on them. Like, you never, th I never thought there were so many shades of brown until I saw a font of Pelmas. <laughs> have, so. have you got any, um, have you got any tips about keeping a font of Pelmas? Is there oh, anything? Um, is there anything that you've learned that you're like, oh, I've learned this, and I should really share this? Or yes, um, I found that a, a lot of the new. I would say most of the new worlds are kind of like this. I found that male tarantulas tend not to burrow quite as much. So, like, um, you know, if you have a terrestrial species that they're kind of opportunistic burrowers, or they're, you know. Sometimes they're obligate burrowers, um, but I've noticed that the males, they tend to grow a little faster. Um, and they're also, they don't burrow quite as much. At least that's my, that's my suspicion. Mm -hmm. um, females tend to burrow. Um, also, a fauna pelma, um, they teach me patience. Oh, yeah. Patience, patience, patience. These guys, they, sometimes they eat, sometimes they don't. I mean, right now, my calcodes, she has eaten once this month once so, so you know they 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 teach us patience i think so i think that's the biggest thing for up on a pilmas is is just just have patience don't don't push them because you know they're um they're just doing their thing they're as long as they're hanging out and walking around and whatnot they're fine yeah um, I, my my Afana palma i think it's eaten once in about two months and yeah. and and the time that it did eat, I yeah. I noticed that it was out on top, right? So and I'm like, okay, like so, so so it's out looking. So yeah. I opened yeah. the lid and it scurried back down to its into its little hide that it's made. Sure. And and I dropped a, a dubia down there, and yeah, it it took it straight away, and then Good. it was a it was a nice size roach it had, so. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's booty, it's abdomen, it's a it's a nice size, so I'm not overly worried. But it's such Good. a beautiful spider. I'm like, oh, it's made a burrow, so I don't get to see it that much. But when I do, right. wow, wow! What, oh, they are, is. yeah, they're absolutely stunning. They really are, and the males um, are quite a bit darker than the females, which um, you know can be kind of confusing for some people. So uh, definitely, you know, that's something to be aware of. But yeah, I. I Afana pelmas are definitely that one species or that one genus for me that was like teaching me lots and lots of patience. And I'm not, not the most patient person in the world. Like, you know what I mean? I love yeah. old worlds for that reason. Like they are spicy and fun and they will eat right away, you know? Um, <laughs> but Afana pelmas are, are, they're going to show you, <laughs> you're yeah. going to learn today. <laughs> yeah, no, most definitely. And, and I think something that I've definitely picked up on uh through my 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 short time of keeping spiders especially huh. on the afona palma so they molt they have beautiful colors oh yeah but as, but as soon as they start going a little bit uh foggy is the only way i can see it like the color starts to saturate they may yeah. not even look like they're in pre-molt so their abdomen may yeah. not be shining or anything like that but right. when they when they start to fade a little bit you huh. know that you, you might be waiting another six months to a year before yeah. they mold, but you know that their appetite is slowing down. 
and that's something yep. that, that I've really really uh, learned with these with these lovely ones and I've got so I've got two oh, I've, got cool. two, I've got two Samani which are lovely so one of them came in um, and my and my Calcodes as well so my mm -hmm. one of my Calcodes and one of my Samani came in a thing from a show that we so you have like mystery boxes yeah uh, at the shows which are lovely and there's a so the spider shop in the uk they do one called uh the gimp box which oh, is cool. spiders missing limbs which is really, oh, okay. really nice so my calcodes wasn't missing any limbs but it it had uh regenerated two legs and they're very small right and my samani was missing a leg and mm -hmm. but my samani's mouth uh now molted and it's got a little um it's got a little appendage and it's using it so it's it's moving around which is really nice that's lovely and, that's good and like and like you said it's about that patience but i'm like i just i really need them both to molt again because i right. you want, you want <laughs> to see them with with um with all, all, eight. Their, all eight legs <laughs> yeah. and, and all at the right size but that's another right thing, that's another thing that just amazes me with um with keeping tarantulas is mm. like their ability to adapt and change I mean, they are they are really incredible on that aspect. Absolutely, they you know, um, my Calcodes, she has changed her enclosure at least three times this last year. She's just torn things up and thrown them around, and um, you know. But I think that I think you're you're absolutely right about that. They are very adaptable, um, and very forgiving. I think a fauna pilma is one of those genus that they're very hardy and they're very forgiving. Um, as far as like husbandry mistakes and stuff like that, they're, you're not going to lose the spider over, you know, oh, I didn't put enough substrate in. Yeah. Well, that's okay. They'll find a way, <laughs> you know. Um, whereas like a Zenesis Intermedia, they're not going to be quite as forgiving. Oh, sorry, Momo. <laughs> but they're, <laughs> that's my dog. Yeah. But they're, you know, they're not going to be quite as forgiving. So your husbandry has to be a little more uh, on, on point for them because they are very moisture dependent. Um, so if they lose that moisture, then then you can really lose that tarantula. I believe same with uh, the Tyranopelma sazami or the Brazilian blue, um, beautiful species, absolutely. But if that moisture isn't, you know, if they don't have, I believe at least like 60, 70% humidity, um, that can be very detrimental for that for that tarantula. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, think when, when we th this, so this would be a really good topic to talk about especially yeah. as we are starting to get into like the hot weather in the UK right so um and our humidity is a lot different to, to where you are um yes so it's, it's thinking about humidity and I th I think at the very beginning when I kept spiders I was like oh you know you'd have to spray it down and and, and doing this yeah. and, and doing that but the thing that I've actually learned is no, you don't. So to have humidity, you can just put a water dish in there and make right. sure it's okay and 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 do a corner. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the worry is that you make it into a quagmire, first of all. But also right. if you are keeping um if you're keeping your slings, so you get your little slings first of all, and you have your little yep. sling pot. Uh, yep. that's my machala sling pot. Um, <laughs> nice. So uh, there's nowhere for that humidity to go out, and right. the a really good way to think about it for anyone that's keeping uh, slings, especially that way, is you wouldn't be able to sit in a sauna uh -huh. all day, every day, and breathe. It's, right, it, you'd, it, you'd, it, eventually you'd pass out. <laughs> yeah. How do you keep humidity correct in yours? Is it like what we've discussed already, or is there any? Anything it's that you... similar. Yeah, yeah. For, for slings, um, I will do just a little spray, uh, like a, a couple of drops of water just yeah. on the side of the vial um, once every week. And then because, because also with slings, we need to be aware that slings don't have that waxy protective coating either. That, right. So they right, can right. actually absorb a lot through um, their exoskeleton in, in their first couple yeah. of instars, I believe. No, I believe I believe you're correct. Um, yeah, definitely. Slings are a lot more fragile than you know 
a juvenile and sub-adult or adult tarantulas, they're definitely, you know, you have to be pretty careful with that humidity because if you do it too much, then uh, they will just liquefy. If you yep. do it too little, then they're not, um, they're not going to thrive quite as well. Um, but I, I found that if, you know, just a couple of little drops on the side of the vial tends yep. to work really well, um, no matter the species. Um and you can I use have... an eyedropper, can't you? You can use an eyedropper or you can oh, take yeah. your a paintbrush in and, and dab right. it on the Just side. Doop, doop, you know. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, sphagnum moss. I found that if you use a little bit of sphagnum moss or, or you know, like the New Zealand yeah. sphagnum moss, um, I found that that stuff is really great. If you just put a little moisture in that, it'll hold it forever. Um, well, maybe not forever, but you know, yeah. a pretty, pretty long while. So, so that really helps. Um, and then, you know, you're not like over saturating your, your sling, um, yeah. which is really great, especially with those tiny little dwarf guys. I have uh, two dwarf slings right now. I have a Nishinokinus species Panama. I believe that's how it's pronounced, mm -hmm. um, but they're called the Panamanian banded dwarf. And the slings for these guys are just unbelievably tiny. Um, so, you know, keeping them in a vial is obviously like the best bet for them because then you'll be able to keep track of them and and know when they're when they're eating and whatnot. Um, but even still, even in the tiny little vial, I they're so hard. <laughs> um, so yeah, I found that just just a couple of little drops of water um, is plenty. Just once a week, you know. Uh, you know, slings slings can be very unforgiving. Yes. Uh, so you know, definitely not like the most beginner of of keeping, if you will, like tiny slings. Um, so I always recommend for like beginner, you know, people to to start out with a tarantula that's a little more established than yeah. than a tiny sling. And then once you get that experience and stuff, then you can bring the little slings in. Um, but in, until then, you know, just play it safe. Yeah, no, most most definitely. I have to fully agree with you on that. Um, mm. I, I think starting off in the hobby, it would be... So starting in, off in the hobby would be good to get an adult, if you can afford an adult. Um, right. Generally thinking, it, and, and if you want something that, that's going to, to be around for a long time, you know, you'd be looking at maybe getting an, an adult female or a sub-adult oh, yeah. female. Um, yeah, but you can even start off with with, with juveniles. So juveniles yep. have definitely developed. They've they've developed a little bit more. They've become a bit more hardy, but they can still a bit like my Balfouri at the moment. Yep. They can still act like silly buggers, um, <laughs> right? And um, and see, you know. Uh, but yeah, most definitely. So we've got uh, seven minutes left, right? Um, so I have a question. What does uh, what does your partner? What does she think of the 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 hobby? Oh, she loves it. Um, yeah. I think she loves it more because it brings me so much joy, and and she she likes that. Um, but she, you know, again, she uh, she she's learning about it with me uh, as I go because I'm I'm always learning. I'm constantly learning. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she, I think she really enjoys that aspect that she gets to learn and that she's, you know, really enjoying these creatures the, the same ways that I do. Um, so yeah, she's, she's a fan. <laughs> cool. Cool. And just, just as we're, uh, wrapping up, is there yeah. anything, is there anything the, uh, you would like to plug? So your social medias, things oh, like that? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. You can find me on TikTok, um, Instagram. And YouTube, um, I believe it's Tarantu underscore Leah 13. Uh, pretty sure I have a link tree, um, like on my Facebook or TikTok and everything. Um, also, Spider Shop is here in the U.S. as well. Yeah. I believe they have separated the coast. So I think they have a Spider Shop East Coast and then Spider Shop West Coast. Um and they're they're wonderful from what I hear. They're they're fantastic. I haven't purchased anything from them yet. Um, but I, you know, I've purchased from Fear Not Tarantulas, uh, Netbug, uh, Bugs and Cyberspace, and Beasley's Exotics. 
and I, I highly recommend them. I also really like on par with fear, not tarantulas. I would say Tom Patterson. If you go to hardcore arachnids, yeah, he's um, just set that up, hasn't he, recently? Yes. In the last year yep. or so. I believe, actually, last like five months or six months or so, he just he just boop, popped up. Um, I have ordered from him, and I mean, he's fantastic. He, Like I said, he's on par with Fear Not. Um, people in the U.S. will know that Fear Not, I mean, they're kind of number one right now because they just do such a wonderful, amazing job. Um, so, yeah, I highly recommend Fear Not and Tom Patterson. For sure. Uh, for anything other than tarantulas, I definitely recommend Bugs in Cyberspace, yeah. uh, Micro Wilderness, um, Substrate. I recommend um, what's what's his name? The Bug Guy. The Bio Dude or the Bug Guy? Bio Dude. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Love the I'm Bio. En I'm, en bio I'm, en dude. I'm envious that you guys have access to the Bio. Dude. He's still not in the UK yet, huh? Yeah. No. Uh. <laughs> do you do you guys have uh do you, do you Leah do you have a YouTube channel? I do. Yeah. I do. You do. Okay. What's your yeah. YouTube channel? It is uh Tarantula. Okay. So, and uh, that's Tarantu underscore Leah. So that's T A R A N T U underscore Leah. Just for people that are just listening. Yeah. Uh, no. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. And uh, so my shameless plug now so i'm i'm nat i'm from somerset spiders i'm mm -hmm. on everything apart from twitter under somerset spiders so yeah come and find me down awesome. I, I make silly videos on youtube um i don't <laughs> know if you've seen them leah but anyway they're a bit, they're a bit <laughs> yes so. i have you make very good i love your videos they're fun they're oh, a lot thank of fun you. you're just stroking <laughs> my ego uh so if uh so yeah thank you for coming on if you stay around uh, we'll have a bit of a chat afterwards and uh, yeah, cool. thank you Leah yeah right. thank you Matt goodbye everyone we'll see you next week see you next week <laughs>